you know, people have seen me as a political painter. Well, politics is life, is, is people. Is you comment on, on the experience of people. I really picked up the brush as such after losing my father. My first work on show was on 79. Um, in Pakuranga, in the 12 Contemporary Painters Exhibition. That was the work in the mixing bowl. It was sort of traumatic losing my father, of course. I was hapu when, when I lost him, and I had a, like a moimoya, really, but some would say it was counselling, it was meditation, and I, and I saw this image, so I had to sort of depict it. So I, um, that was my first work I did back in 78. In 79 the work was shown and it was really good because suddenly I was put into this sort of domain of top New Zealand painters with my first work and I couldn't believe it really. I'm very fast when I paint. Um, I have no fear when I paint, you know. You're led by an image and you're really chasing that image um, and that story. So I'm not, I'm not afraid to take those moves and to mix what wouldn't normally be mixed. All I know is I was told, you, you don't put oils underneath acrylics, just don't do that. And other than that, there were no rules. We were based in Carrington Hospital, um, so it gave me the ability to work on a large scale. At the time, I was researching my history, obviously, after losing Dad, and looking at, certainly looking at our Waikato Whakapapa in history knowing about Portato to Fero Fero, how he placed after the land wars, placed our families back here in Tamaki, um, at Orake. Um, my, my dad was brought up in the old Papakainga. So I had those influences of tribal identity really happening. So I was searching, I was planting, I was rising. I wanted to relate to Ask the Mountain, Portato being the king, um, and then relating it to the um, beginning of the treaty hearings with Ngāti Whātua. Um, through, through another part of my whakapapa, there's Aparo Karaka, who is um, from um, the Kaipara. So I had that sign, those yellow signposts, sort of saying, well, this is Ngāti Whātua land, and with the occupation at Takaparafa. So all of these things were about to happen. So there was this bridging, if you like, in time. We'd had the Ngātamato, we'd had land protests, Raglan, Bastion Point, but all that painting really was pre preparatory, it was happening in me, but it was also going to be happening. So it was a busy work. And it was epic for me to be talking about that and just being so immature, really, and young as a painter. But Uri Atao was an affirmative process for me. Um, and discovering that that's the name of the hapu for the, for for the area where the art gallery, the new art gallery is, in central Auckland. That's our hapu. So, you know, actually discovering that, yes, I am part of the people of the land right there, and I thought it's appropriate for the exhibition to open that, that space, um, that I actually address the work that I was doing, which was the claim, you know, putting in the claims for Ngāi Uri Atao hapu, one of the hapu of, of the tri tribe Ngāi Ki Tāmaki, because there's Ngāi Tai Ki there as well. I wanted to identify that this is the space, that this land is Māori land, and that's why I had to insignify it and to have the, the kaitiaki overlooking the space. And it was painted deliberately for the opening and also just to address the claims. And I wanted it to be like a korowai, the birds' arms outstretched in the korowai over Tāmaki with the claim numbers the work that I was involved in, in the RMA level. Um, but more importantly, the Y357, Y423, Naitai's claims in Tāmaki, and the Kaitaki, which is really myself, my own self-imagery, but um, we have Kahu Matamoimwe, an iwi, and that's why the big bird, up uh, Orake, but also f for us as well, chasing back Whakapapa back to Rangitoto. So I just wanted to be saying these are the this is the people of this land and in, in central in the CBD area. Part of the early protest movement, the Waitangi Action for example group, was the Treaties of Fraud. We had to say that because in fact the European version of the treaty could be said to be a fraud. And government in fact could be said to be a fraud if you look at what was entered into in the Māori text of the treaty. 
So hence the understanding of me as being a activist artist or a, um, I think if I'm called a terrorist because I was quite adamant about what I'm quite sure Rangatira signed. They didn't sign away their, their estates and their forests and their fisheries at all. So in, in ask, being asked to take Naitai's claim, it's my uncle, Uncle McDevitt Kirkwood. Um, he asked me be, just before he passed to pick up on the claim that he registered. He was concerned that there was errors in the claim. He was worried about Auntie Ngungu out at, out at Umapuya, who had been placed there by Tapuya to keep the remnant lands of Naitai's safe. And it has been one hell of a battle for her in her lifetime. And I have to say, it's a hell of a battle continuing that battle. Being, if you like, in such a controversial position, running a treaty claim for the iwi hasn't been very comfortable. <laughs> very informative for the artists, but not very comfortable for a lot of people. <laughs> I can't wait till it's all finished, to be honest. And let's leave the grievance behind, but certainly, you know, you can't forget. At least we forget, you know. So we'll have to build a new society, a certain one that's a bit more enriched and one that's a bit more um, tolerant and um, encompassing, because that's what our tūpuna did. That's what the treaty means to me. When I live amongst my work, my work is me. And so in a way, it's my marae, they are my pō. You know, I sit at home, and if you took the paintings out of this house, I'd be quite empty, you know, and, but they're my friend as well. I'm quite comfortable. At last, I'm comfortable with my painting. And it's taken all that time to get there, and now I know that I can have 20 years of painting and be quite happy with myself um, and not struggle it. That Modi that you get, they don't leave here until they've got that. They don't leave here until they hold their own essence. Because in a way they are, you know, they're tongue, they're my babies, but there's a relationship that a painter has with their work. And of course there's always another work to be done. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm satisfied where I'm at right now, no, like I'm very satisfied. Mm. Yeah.